What's up, y'all? I'm Demarcus Beasley, and you're listening to the Peel. Excuse me, guys. Um, <laughs> as soon as you're ready. Yeah. Hey, you didn't get a beer. Uh, this I, is a I problem. Did. Edson, <laughs> can you do me a favor, my friend? Can you get me a beer? Did uh, we get any bottle caps from them? No, because the one guy I have, he's uh, he's good. not here. No, he's here. Oh, oh. Uh, tell him, tell him it's from the Peel. Go to Bobby. Bobby. Surprise yeah. me! I don't care. <laughs> he's That's not, not a joke. That is. It's kind of a joke. No, it's not a joke. Oh, okay. I will drink just about anything. Okay. With alcohol in it. So. Other uh, than Everclear, because damn. Oh uh, yeah, no. Unless they're in no. Jello so shots, but they typically don't set. But it's still fun. Are we live? We are live. We're <laughs> BSing live. This is uh, totally awesome. Welcome to episode 41 of the What's Peel. What's up, people? Oh. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm Sean. Uh, of course, our, our third wheel is not here again. Um, he Damn claims it, to be Josh. sick. Damn it. But, God, those four points must really be getting to him. I mean, that was two weeks ago now. All right. Like... He was sick last week. I'll give him like that. But then he bitched and moaned that he had, you know, some form of pneumonia or something. I don't know. He said, oh, I went to the game and I was sick. Okay. I, I was sick. And so, you know, now I'm sicker with pneumonia. And I just want to be like, dude, stop smoking and you wouldn't have this problem. Oh. <laughs> what's up, Josh? Yeah, what's up? Uh, Calling you out on air. So this better mean that he's here next week so he can at least defend himself. Oh, if he's not, we'll just keep ripping into him until he does. <laughs> like, there's no love lost here. No. If you don't show up and you have no excuse other than you're sick, sorry. So we are here at uh, Eighth Wonder. Uh, in case, you know, this is your first time watching. Uh, definitely come out next week. Uh, we'll be here at 7 o'clock. We go live 7 o'clock. And our, the Internet's actually really working today. Well, you know, it, it has been, re- quote, unquote, really working but then it will go out. <laughs> so we're hoping that it stays up. If yeah. it doesn't, we have backup methods, i.e. I'm going to throw my phone into hotspot mode, <laughs> and we'll just go off that. Do you have unlimited data? I do. Oh, okay. I have like two gigs on my hotspot. I have unlimited, and it's on 4G, and it was pretty It was pretty fast. It was fast enough to probably broadcast at 480. Damn it, we didn't do 480 again. I really got to like, we got to do that next time before we actually start we broadcasting. Are at, we're at 720, and on no, YouTube's yeah, end, it, it said it was it good. It tells me, yeah. but I mean, it's just like, you know. What's up, Alex? Um, so a lot to talk about today. We have the um, the match against Portland, uh, which I'm kind of on the fence whether it was good good uh, good match for us, bad match. Uh, there is that. We will set up for the RSL match, which I'm going to tell you now. I don't think that we should walk into that match lightly. What's up, Josh? Uh, <laughs> I can see. I can see the messages Josh is sending us behind the scenes. And I had to make sure to pull funny. it up. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, the Gold Cup because the, the last time we were on was right before the Gold Cup final. Uh, so that's big. The Dash still tearing things up. Uh, they're, what, two positions out of playoffs? Yeah, the four for NWSL and they're yep. in sixth right now. So, yeah. Uh, so we got, we got them to cover. Uh cover a little bit of the all-star game really just the the roster um u.s open cup match which mm. we actually have on this tv over here and then uh beer incoming uh oh we'll also have carson on uh we'll have carson yeah, on about the will. toros they played today um so is he a, gonna is he gonna be i know he's coming into yes. houston for a match in september i don't know if he'll be here on a wednesday so what you're saying is we'll we have to him. do a podcast recording over the weekend with him live yeah That'd be great. It would be. Even if all we do is that one segment, it sounds like a plan. Oh, yeah. Uh, we can even just record it, throw it on the show. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right there. Um, That's how much love we have for you, Carson, just so you know. We do need a fourth mic, though. We need to work on getting one of those. I still got to pay for mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got you. Um, so uh, <laughs> I guess we'll uh, we'll dive right into it if you want to bring up the... Uh, yes, what do you want me to bring the, up? The I have stats all from these the Donovan match. Uh, all right. Give me just a second. You need to stall. Stall. I'm stalling. stalling. I'm stalling. I'm stalling. Why did you tell me to bring up MLS soccer when I really needed Dynamo.com? Well, because it brings up all the scores, too. But and then we eventually go over that. Who cares about those? Well, they're I not, care. They're not local. Uh, yeah, but they all play into this. Schedule. Also, can we just talk about how bad Dallas is? Uh, hold on. Is, where, where do I pull the stats even up at? Go to the schedule. Okay. Schedule. Yes. 
I'm on the schedule. Uh, go uh, to re- Match Center. Match Center. Uh, there right. you go. All right. That makes more sense. All okay, right. so the way you do this, just in case you're wondering, you go to dynamo.com, actually HoustonDynamo.com, <laughs> then you go to schedule, and then from schedule, you go to hover over the thing, and there's a match center link. Click the match center link, and then there's the stats. <laughs> Dude, that's freaking phenomenal. All right, cool. We've moved uh, into the 21st century Real today. quick, before we get into that, uh, I'm going to let you do Josh's job. Uh, how does everybody find us? Or at least just your website. <laughs> You're not supposed to just throw this at me out of the blue. Uh, well, the site is up and running. The video is on the site, so it's <laughs> thepeellive.com. Josh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, so thepeellive.com. Feel free to hit it up. Uh, you can see the video on there. If you want to chat with us, uh, hit us up in the YouTube chat. Uh, that's on the YouTube, and you can click that video, and it should take you give you the option to check it out on YouTube. Yep. Uh, you can also hit us up on Twitter at thepeel05. Uh, and we will respond to your tweets tonight because Josh has nothing better to do since he's laying at home like he, a he better. pansy. He better. Uh, and we're also <laughs> checking Facebook since Josh, again, has nothing to do and <laughs> is laying there waiting for your comments. So feel free to reach out to Josh and tell him you love him because I'm sure he feels good about that. Yeah. Uh, so And then you, you can also find us. Uh, this episode will actually be posted back on Dynamo Theory. Um, I, I just don't feel right posting if everybody's not here, but at least we have two out of three. So this will be posted up on Dynamo Theory probably tomorrow. So you can find us at dynamotheory.com. Uh, you can also find or check out our friends Dynamo Theory at their Facebook page, which is at Dynamo Theory. Uh, it's actually just slash Dynamo Theory. Is it just slash Dynamo Theory? There's no at in it's Facebook, Twitter. bro. Or you can catch them on Twitter at Dynamo Theory. There you go. <laughs> I got to keep them in line since Josh is not here. Yeah. It, it, see, I don't have any hatred towards you like I have him. Well, nobody does. Everybody loves me. <laughs> but um, in case you were under a rock, uh, match ended in a 3-3. Oh, Lord. 3-3 draw. 3-3. 2-2. What my fault. match were you watching? Where did that third? I mean, it was look, in my they, dreams. Okay, look. They, <laughs> I know Portland scored a third goal, and I know if Merritt had his way, that third goal would have counted. But it was offside. Yes, and he it was offside. With Leonardo. Not only that. Okay, I'm going to throw something out there. Not only did he interfere with Leonardo on that third goal that Portland supposedly scored, Adi interfered with him on the second goal that actually counted. And not just interfered with him, he tripped Leonardo, so Leonardo wasn't even able to make a play on the ball. The problem was, if Leonardo had been able to make a play on the ball, I guarantee you he would have at least deflected it. Now, I'm not saying it wouldn't have gone in. Oh, dude, I am. I was hot. <laughs> Especially since Merritt Paulson was tweeting out that Portland deserved the extra goal. And I'm like, not only did you not deserve that goal, you didn't deserve the other goal that you scored. I hate that. I hate that. But I love Merritt, so I, like, I was torn. I was like, I love Merritt, because at least he's vocal. Um, and he did, like, he was he was replying to tweets that friends of mine were sending at him uh, as a result <laughs> of his posting of the videos and stuff. And I can tell you that it was pretty funny following those group chats. Um, it was pretty great. Yeah. Um, but anyways, not to... I mean, that, you know, that, was, that was the game right there, really. Those two goals that Portland scored. Uh, you know, we were, we were down one goal. We scored the second to tie it. They scored another immediate, like within five mm-hmm. minutes of that goal, and then it was like forever, and we finally scored the tying goal so, in the eightieth, eightieth minute, ex- almost like seventy nine minutes and thirty or forty something seconds. Yeah, I mean, this was probably the most even test that they were going to face at home so far. I, I don't know if I could say Dallas, but even if you just look at the stats, most of the stats were pretty even. Let's go total the shots. There you go. On target, off target. Yeah, block. 16 total shots for both teams. Six on target for Dynamo, five on target for Portland. Uh, five off target for Dynamo, eight off target for uh, Portland. And that's actually kind of a big deal because that means the defense is basically forcing shot bad shots mm-hmm. um, and probably a few shots outside the box, which they were. Uh, and then five shots were blocked for the Dynamo and three shots were blocked for, the, for Portland. So I guess a couple of the things that I, I, I know that I wanted to hit on was the, the, the style of play, I guess you could say, that the Dynamo were playing, mm-hmm. they were leaving way too much space inside the box to Portland's attackers. So one thing I noticed, and, and this is something I wanted to bring up this week, we were very we were stretched very wide, um, and it stretched our midfield tremendously mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, we try to stay narrow in the midfield. And the problem with that when your outside backs are stretched so wide and your wingers are stretched so wide especially with a team like Portland, is they can actually exploit that. They can actually exploit down the middle and on the wings. And so they were forcing us to stay wide on defense, but the problem was is they also had guys in the middle that were pushing the ball up real fast, like Chara. Chara, Guzman, and uh, 
their other guy whose name I can't remember, they were abusing the middle of our midfield like it was not even there. Uh, and Cabezas was doing a great job, don't get me wrong, and he's one of my favorite players this year by a, quite, a, quite a wide margin. But if it wasn't for Cabezas, that game would have been 5-1, 5-2. Uh, because he he just he killed off so many counter attacks yeah. so frequently, uh, and it just makes such a big deal when you have a player like that. I just felt like that needed to be said. No, it, I mean he was due. He was definitely due for a goal. Oh, dude, I was. Uh, <laughs> so it, the funny thing was right before, like I don't know, maybe fifteen twenty minutes before he scored that goal. Actually, it might have been at the beginning of the match. Uh, so I sit with Cisco and a couple other people, Dynamo people, and uh, you know we were talking, and Cisco and I were talking, and we were like, you know, the goal that that. When, when Cabezas finally scores his goal, it's not going to be some cheap goal. It's not going to be a dribbler. You know, it's going to have power behind it. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be well-placed. Not well-placed, but it's, it's going to be more about power than finesse. Mm-hmm. And that goal was absolutely everything of that. I mean, he deflected it, or he, you know, he headed it into the ground, but it was so much power that, uh, well, that Gleason had no chance to I stop I will have that. to say, I, I don't know about the power part after watching the highlights. A lot of that power. just came from Memo. He did not well, twerk his head around. No, for no, that no. Ball. He, he didn't have to though. That was the thing, right? That was meant and that's to another be a, point I want to that bring was, up. Memo. Oh, dude, Memo's service was phenomenal. <laughs> and of course, you know where I sit in 102, those corners. I got to see every corner he took. I got to see every free kick he took on that side of the field. And I, I you know, the kid's legit. That's all I'm gonna like. We've been wanting that type of player that can serve those balls in. And you know, everybody's been like, oh, Alex, Alex, Alex. And I'm like, what about Memo now? I want Memo. Forget Alex. Give me Memo. Give me Memo and Martinez. And I'm good. Speaking of that, are we, why are we still waiting for that move? For what I mean, move? a little for off Alex? topic, yeah. Uh, so the reported two million transfer was a joke. Yeah, by I saw the way. It. Uh, they they did have a transfer on transfer option on the table for significantly less money than that. Um, uh, but why are we waiting to move Alex? I, I think part of it is the team wants to be sure that Martinez is going to be as real as they expect him to be. Um, and I think part of it is just Alex does enjoy it here. He doesn't necessarily want to leave. And, you know, when you have a player like that that likes playing for you, it, it's hard to move him. It well, is. when you're hanging out with Cynthia Bourbano a lot, why would you want to move him? <laughs> I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. I'm not either. Oh, no, no. That, that's about it because I also don't want my girlfriend to huh. put me on the couch. Uh-huh. <laughs> so one thing I will note from the passing accuracy here is that uh, – Dynamo had 16 crosses, um, but only like 25%. So four of those crosses actually made it, you know, to their intended mm-hmm. target. Whereas Portland only took 10, but five of them made it to their target. So we are not very accurate with our crosses, and that's not a surprise considering our wingers are not really crossing guys. They prefer to take guys on. Yeah. Um, but I think memo factors into that a lot too memo is the type of guy that will cross it and he is usually fairly accurate on those crosses can we also talk about kubo kubo looked lost and i don't know if that's just him coming back from the international break well not international break but gold cup so kubo is an interesting conundrum right number one maro's been playing lights out so he's got the competition now i mean he's had the competition but he's got the competition for real like it's one v one type of competition yeah um and the other thing is that I feel like Portland played to minimize Kubo as much as possible. Uh, Portland is a physical defending central unit, and they have no problem pushing and pulling and you know doing whatever they can tactically. And then let's not negate Chara, who is a phenomenal defensive midfielder who will destroy attacks. <laughs> um, and I think he was, for the most part, he was one of the ones that was spying on Kubo a lot. And Chara just Chara negates a lot of really good quality forwards, center forwards, um, and no matter how high they pushed Eric, you know, pushed Eric up there, it just it wasn't working for him. And and you know, some of that is also the wingers that were playing with him. Uh, Portland wasn't really respecting them as much, uh, respecting their pace, respecting their ability to bring the ball into the box. Uh, I mean, you saw it when Elise came on; the difference it immediately made. Uh, you saw the difference. You know, Kyoto Kyoto didn't have as much of an influence on the game as as we would have hoped. But, you know, they also have a good right back, so yeah. I can't fault him much for that. I do want to see him again, uh, you know, in the near future uh, to see, you know, to see what he's capable of uh, after his injuries, after his knocks, after his time off, and after Gold Cup. But I still think he's going to come up better than, you know, whoever else we would have had over there. So, yeah. 
you know, it is what it is. But I think that's part of it, too, is, is Kubo, you know, and I've, I've said this before, Kubo needs players on the outside uh, and in the attack that can pull defenders off him and leave him 1v1. Mm. You look at how Portland was playing him, a lot of times it was 2v1. And Kubo 2v1 is never going to be your best bet. It's just not. Um, it's not the way he plays. It's not his style. Um, you know, the few chances he had, that was 1v1. And it was when he was able to turn his guy or when he was able to get past his guy or able to get the ball threaded through. Um, and so, you know, that's just how Kubo is. And I, I think that's something to keep in mind as we go forward because Kubo is kind of, a, and I hate to say it, but he's kind of a one-dimensional player. Um, and you really can't afford that in MLS too much because teams will key in on that and they will negate that one dimension. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've been, we've been lucky because we've had Kyoto and Elise to help with that a lot, but at some point, pressure off Kubo, uh, we've definitely got to have somebody else be able to do that, and hopefully that's Martinez. Hopefully uh, Tomas can be that, you know, possession guy, that holding guy in the middle of the field high up the pitch, just outside the box, maybe a few yards outside the box, that can feed Elise, that can feed Kyoto, that can feed Kubo, that can feed Morrow, whoever else may be up there, you know, and give them opportunities to run into the box, to run at defenders, that sort of thing. And so I guess we'll find out, right, in a week or two when Tomas is ready. Do you well, think he sees minutes this week? I think he, man, in I, RSL? that is, it, you know, I, I want to say yes. But I, I also trust Wilmer to make the right decision, and I just don't know because I haven't been out at practice. Um, everything I've heard says that he's on track to start, not to start, but to play. Mm. Um, but I really don't know what that means for Wilmer. That could be five minutes. That could be 15 minutes. That could be – I think Wilmer wants to ease him in. I think Matt Jordan has a desire to ease him in. And as a result, I do think we – you know, we, we might see him sub in in the last couple of minutes type of thing to just get, get his le- you know, match legs underneath him mm. and try to get up to speed but I don't think he has an impact on the match. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think he would right away either. Um, now, if he does, I'm going to lose my crap. Like, you have no <laughs> idea. Uh, it's going to be great. If he has an impact on the match at all, I'm, it's going to be. I'm going to hit Twitter, and it's just going to be, I want you to eat your crow, and I want you to eat your crow, and I want you to eat your crow. <laughs> because there have been people out there, that have fans, that have specifically said, well, how do we know this guy's any good? And I'm like, well, you have no reason not to think he's not going to be good at this point because you have seen what Jordan brought in. You have seen what Wilmer's done with who he's brought in. And if anything, I don't understand how people can say he's not good. He just hasn't gotten minutes. He hasn't been in the right situation. It's a Will exactly. Bruin. It's a Will it's Bruin a Will type Bruin. of situation. It's, it's a Will exactly Bruin. It you know, it's just an international ver- version of Will Bruin in terms of the situation. You know, Will Bruin here, he was in a bad situation with Coyle and, and it wasn't going to get better with Wade Barrett. And uh, so they moved him and you look at how he's doing out in Seattle and he's doing great. So I think it's the same type of situation, and I do think Tomas has the capability to up his game uh, to really shock and surprise a lot of people. Uh, I don't know to what extent, but if he gets five, six, seven assists before the end of the season, then we've paid good money for a good yeah. guy. I'm still, I mean, I mean, I know we've talked about this for the last, what, three, four weeks now. I'm just, I'm still waiting to hear something on the Alex front. You know, Are you me. expecting a transfer? Are you hoping for a transfer? I'm hoping for a transfer, and it's it's not that I want him gone because I don't, but it's kind of one of those it'd be good for him because the team already has another idea for their future, and it's not involving him, or they wouldn't have brought in Tomas. And oh, well, I think to be honest, they had an idea for their future regardless of Tomas. Anyways, Joe Holland is that guy for them, anyways. and I. That, and that, Memo is quickly becoming that other guy. That's going to open or put three big question marks at the end of the year with those three guys. We're in a good position, though. We are in a good position. And I think that needs to be said is uh, that's the type of decisions you want to have to make. You don't want to have to make the decision of do we need to find another guy because this guy's not working out. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So. And it's funny because all we were doing in the offseason was complaining about the midfield. And now we are... We have an overabundance of midfield players. And how little has actually changed. I mean, we drafted a guy, and we brought a guy in from RGV. Everybody else is the same that we've had, except for Tomas, of course. But it, he's a midfield, mid, mid-season acquisition who is going to take, most likely, take time to adjust to MLS. And so, on top of that, can, can we finally start looking at saying maybe farewell to Ricardo? Rico, it's time. I, 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 at most, I think maybe he plays another year. Um, but I think Rico's position now is 
he's becoming that veteran leadership guy in the middle of the yeah. field, and I feel like the team thinks they need that. But I think, personally, I think Cabasis is also becoming that just because of how fiery he can be, how much of a leader he... You know, Rico, the thing with Rico is Rico is always the quiet guy. He leads by example. He yeah. leads quietly in the locker room. He's not going to be that vocal you know, rambunctious guy. I mean, he'll get in a referee's face out of being pissed off, but he's not necessarily going to go to his teammates and yell and scream and rile them up type of thing. Whereas Cabezas comes across to me as being that type of player. He really does. Speaking of that, me and Josh were still trying to figure out where we thought he was going to be getting all these yellows and red cards because I think the guy only has, what, two yellows? Three so yellows. when you go <laughs> MLS, the way it's the way it's set up is when you go to I want to say two or three matches without a yellow card, you lose a yellow card accumulation point. Basically, when you get five accumulation points, you're suspended. The thing is, is he's had a couple of games where he's kind of sat back and been able to play that defensive mid role, and he's not been on the counter trying to recover. You know, and and you saw it in this match. He had to do a lot of recovering. He had to do a lot of counter. Uh, you know, counter killing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and that that's why they have him is for that specifically. But he's been a very good defensive mid as a holding mid as well. Um, and we needed that. That's yeah. been very good to see him be able to handle that role and be able to handle that, uh, you know, type of, of uh, that that type of change to the way that he plays. Um, in case you're wondering why we're looking up, we have the Miami uh the Miami and the uh, Cincinnati FC match, or FC Cincinnati match on, because uh, honestly, Sean and I were talking, we're more intrigued in this than the, uh, the MLS All Star game. Oh, that's right, the All Star games today. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, whatever. Darn. All right, so they're playing uh, Real Madrid, though. You know the Real Madrid. Have they announced game. if Ronaldo is coming back to play that? Because I know he wasn't here for. El I Pasco. haven't seen it, and to be frank, I doubt he's coming he is, to play that. Is Ronaldo coming back for this? For, he's not coming back for the All-Star game? No, I, I don't think pissed he off is. I don't think they care, to be honest, because everybody else in that club are, you know, is a big enough name to draw. And at this point, it wouldn't matter. Him, him playing isn't going to change how many tickets they've sold. It may, may change how many people tune in, but yeah. it's, I don't think it is. Uh, now, I do want to talk about, from a, from a broadcasting standpoint, how ESPN covered a Classico this weekend. I Holy still have it DVR'd. Crap. I watched probably like the first 15, 20 minutes. Well, not of it. just the match. They ran basically cover to cover coverage like half a day before and ha- all the way through half a day yeah. after. Like they played it up as a really big deal. And that's a huge deal for soccer in, in this country because we haven't seen that. No. We really haven't. Not for games that didn't involve teams that were already here in the country. And this is a preseason match. We also have to look. I mean, look at the two matches that have been played here. The, just this summer alone, Manchester Derby, yeah, and Al Clasico, yeah. two of the biggest rivalries Absolutely. in all of the soccer universe. It does make me wonder who US. paid the money to get them here, because these guys are all about getting paid money. Yeah, um, I mean, did MLS foot the bill? Did U.S. Soccer foot the bill? No, I don't think that. I think maybe MLS did a little bit, at least for for Real Madrid to end up playing MLS, but I, I don't think it was a big deal. Or a, a big part of them. Uh, I want to say it was this privately owned company that runs the Some. International Champions Cup. Oh, oh, well, that makes sense. I mean, they're sitting on money. You look how much they charge for yeah, tickets out there. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's just like U.S. soccer charging an arm and a leg for tickets, but we won't go there. Oh, well, I'm going to go there. $70 for a supporter section ticket now? Yeah, buddy. $70 to get into the match in the supporter section where you stand up the entire time. Let me tell you, when I went to go see my first U.S. Mex- or my first US match, which was U.S. Mexico and San Antonio, I think I paid $45. So the uh, U.S. versus Argentina Gold Cup, not Gold Cup, uh, Copa, 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 whatever the heck, Copa Americana? Yeah. The What's Copa you, Americana? Yeah, that was like. 30 bucks. Centenario. Yeah, Centenario. Yeah. Thank you, that one. It was like 30 bucks to get in in the supporter section. Yeah. Well, actually, I'll have to get with Megan because I want to say that was wrong. I, I can I verify because I, I went with somebody who was in the supporter yeah, section. I, I mean, I really don't remember. By the way, that was the best experience for AO and AO Houston. I just want to give a shout out because that they, they you know the whole AO showed up, of course. Let like me, let me tell you because I was but part of that was, whole tailgate. That was impressive. I don't think I've sweated more oh, in my dude, entire life. Life out so of that, hot. out of that uh, box truck that we had, we had two pallets of ice, we had two grills, we had everything loaded in this box truck. Two runs to Sam's Club, 
It was cra- it was crazy hot yeah. that day, and and, and then it uh, rained right in the tailgate. And oh it worse. yeah, no, that was that <laughs> there was, was about thirty of us else. packed inside the box truck. But you know, it was, still, it was still good. I mean, regardless of all that, it was Houston showed out. I mean, we really did, and AO showed out, and AO Houston showed out, and I just while we're talking about that kind of stuff, I felt it was important to bring it up because it was it was a big deal. Nothing. All right, that was a good save. Let me tell you how stressed out. I'll tell you off the air how stressed out Megan was that entire week because the turnaround was real short. Oh yeah, I believe it. You know, it was the same thing with uh, with us getting a bus trip up to Dallas. Turnaround was real short. Are you watching, Edson? Or did you just tweet that just for the heck of it? Oh well, he, we were talking about the lineup. No, no, that's what I'm asking, though. Like, did you just feel like the need to tweet it so that we could retweet it, or what? Wait, so Gareth Bale didn't start? Well, of course Bale didn't start. Huh. Because they advertise him Navas, as Gareth, Gareth Bale. Navas, Ramos, Nacho, Cruz. That sucks. Nacho. Theo, Lucas, <laughs> Lorente, Llorente, sorry. Asensio, Mayoral, Isco. Oh, by the way, Isco is phenomenal. Uh, Atrof, and, of course, their coach, Zinedon Zidane. We'll we'll get we'll get more into the uh, the All Star match. If you can go back to the Dynamo score real quick, uh, and then then I got some I'm stuff on from it. the RSL. Give me a second. There it is. Now you're good. Scroll up to the uh, box score. Sweet. Right. Um, oh, also AJD got extremely pissed off after they gave up that. Was it the second goal or the first goal? It was. But he sec- also got burnt. It was the <laughs> second goal. No, it was the second goal that he got really pissed off about, yeah. and he was pissed off because Audi interfered. I don't know if I've said that enough. <laughs> Audi interfered. Merritt, if you're listening by some chance, fuck you. <laughs> also, pardon uh, my French. Scroll down just a little bit. Uh, keep going right there. Uh, it was like we said a two-two draw. Uh, Diego Valeri did strike first uh, in the you, 13th Valeri. minute. Uh, it was a good goal though. It was. It was. Mar- a, it was very much a Valeri goal. Mm-hmm. Mar Minota scoring the 32nd minute or 37th minute, doing what he does best. What's up, Mario? Um, Sebastian Blanco scoring the 43rd minute. That was a crap goal. It was. Uh, and then Juan Cabeza with uh, the assist uh, from Memo uh, in the 81st minute to draw it even. And you know what? We were really close to getting that third goal, too. At least yeah. was less than a foot from, like, uh, that, go- that was so close. It was yep. ridiculous. We so are going to close. run over today. Oh, there's no. Well, we're only at 18, 19 minutes. We're already at 730. <laughs> well, okay, to be fair, we started like five minutes late. That's true. Well, I guess ten minutes, actually. Yeah, because we were about BSing. It. Yeah. All right. Um, um, what was I going to say? You made me forget. What I, I had something like mind-shatteringly important to say. No, I, didn't. Oh. I don't remember what it was. It was you just want to go to the schedule for the week, or the, the scores from last week. I'll read them off at some point. The scores for last week? Yeah. Okay, that's on here. All right, there you go, right there. Can you read those? Are those too small for you? Uh, Do you need glasses? No, I man? don't need glasses, but that's all right. not all the scores. <laughs> okay, well, God, some people. I know, I'm difficult. Oh, you are something, all right. All right, uh, well, that's not going to work. No, the, uh, right there. Right there? 29. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, but there was matches on Sunday, too. Yeah, well, I'll read those off on Sunday. Oh, okay. All, all right. right. Wow, that's a lot of matches. Yeah, uh, all but one team, or all but two teams played on Saturday. I see that. Uh, all right, uh, so Atlanta United took on Orlando City. It was a 1-1 draw. Um, don't know who that is. Uh, then New England beat my boys. Uh, we'll get back to that, Alex. Just seen us. Sorry, we'll get back uh, to that, Alex. What VAR? VAR. Yeah. Yeah. It VAR. Was, yeah. Um, New England beating the, the Union three nothing. Mm, that one has to hurt, huh? It does. Uh, they're not making the playoffs, and I, I honestly, uh, outside of this, I'll show, be honest. Though, I the want Revs a whole this front year, office change. the Revs this year are a really good team. So yeah. you know, it, it's like I say all along, though. I mean, you can't count anyone out in MLS, anyways, and. You know what? Philly could go on a win streak. You never know. I don't don't count so. them out, man. Uh, the Red Bulls beating Montreal <laughs> Impact 4 <laughs> They didn't nothing. beat them. They took them behind the woodshed, man. Okay, oh. so what do you say about this one? <laughs> I'll let you read this <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the beautiful one. This is this is the one that I originally saw the scoreline and thought it was the other way around mm-hmm. because it made no sense to me. But Vancouver absolutely just paddling FC Dallas 4-0. Uh, down, and down Dallas minute. got a red card uh, to drop down to 10 men, of course, which yep. is fantastic. And um, they beat them at home, which is even Yeah, better. well, but, you know, it's like I said before. If nobody's in the stadium to watch them lose, do they actually lose? I mean, you know. It's just, Ouch. <laughs> that's just how it is, man. <laughs> just saying. Bring it. Uh, bring it, Dallas fans. Then you had the 2-2, two-two, the two-two draw between us and Portland. Yep. Uh, Chicago Fire did bounce back. Uh, even though they lost, it was three two because I want to say they were they were down what two nothing. 
Yeah, they were down two nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were down two nothing, and then it was two one, and then it was three one, and then it was three two. Yep. Uh, next one. By the way, remember I said this name previously that he he he's a big key for SKC this year, blessing, and he's been a big key for them yeah. being as good as they are. Uh, that game, it, by the way, that game hurt our standings. Just so you know, just throw that out there. And then the loons beating DC United because that's what DC United does. They D- lose. D- <laughs> DC. You know that the funny thing is that's two teams we faced last week back to back, and you know we drew with Minnesota and we beat DC. And then Minnesota goes and beats DC by four. And everybody tells me that Minnesota's not that good. They're not that great. They're not that great. Hello, they actually are a pretty decent team. Give them credit. Yes, yep. they had a few bad starts early, but they corrected. They they you know righted the ship and they got going where they needed to go. Yeah. So I don't want to hear anyone saying that Minnesota's a bad team and that we suck because we lost or we tied Minnesota twice this year. Mm. No, we just faced them at the wrong times. We really did. And you got our opponent that we're playing this weekend. RSL took on uh, Columbus Crew to a 2-2 draw. Um, That's fair. Yep, San Jose is going to end up taking – or San Jose beat Colorado, excuse me. They're going to end up taking that three points later. Huh? Yeah. They're maybe. saving that one in the back pocket. And then one that I totally thought was going to be different, which was LA Galaxy uh, Seattle. I, th- I thought Seattle was going to win. So, honestly. okay. So this mm-hmm. game was all about the emotion behind it because you had Siggy coming back, you know, with L.A., you had Kurt Analfo finally axed with L.A., which, by the way, that was a long time coming. I feel bad for the guy because he had some good reasonings and good excuses. But as we say on here, excuses only get you so far, yeah. and they're just excuses. Yep. Um, but that's what that, that match was all about, Siggy. And you know what? To be fair, uh, I don't think I've ever seen Jermaine Jones play as hard as he played for Siggy, ever. Do you think he's trying to make his way back into... Internet, or I don't think he cares enough about the U.S. national yeah, team at well, this point. Well, obviously not when you're wearing Mexico kit. No, I, I think it was more or less him trying to show Siggy that he belonged in that position, and I think he was trying to show Siggy he wants to be the man on the team and he wants to be that central guy that yeah. is recognized as being that. And I think, too, Siggy set him free. I feel like Kurt and Alpha kind of locked him down and forced him to play a certain way, and yeah. Jermaine Jones needs the freedom to play how he need, how he feels the game is allowing him to play. Yeah. Uh, and then the the match that I honestly thought was going to be different. Wow, I didn't uh, see the four nothing uh, trouncing of uh, NYCFC. Mm. They went into Toronto and got beat four nothing. I must say though, that goal by by Javinko in the run of play, goal of the week, easy. His free kick goal was phenomenal too. Yeah, it was. I, I saw mean, both of those goals and they were awesome. He single handedly won me my uh, fantasy weekend. Don't forget this one. This one's big. Yeah, uh, the US or the MLS home. Uh, homegrown team did which play didn't to a include draw. memo didn't include Luca no come on MLS you're killing me. uh they ended up playing uh Chivas Guadalajara the under 20 team and they played to a 2-2 draw uh so I, I feel like it was extremely impressive I had all intentions of watching that and I fell asleep uh but I did on a side note I did end up watching the Special Olympics game which was actually extremely fun to watch was that streamed online uh no it was on TV what Actually, no, excuse me. It was on YouTube, excuse me. Oh, so it was streamed. Yeah. Okay. It was, I was, it was like, on well, who picked that game up? But wow. No, it was, uh, it was actually gonna go fun give to them watch. money. It was That's a awesome. co-ed, co-ed team, and it was hard. Oh, two Dynamo players uh, who played on the Dynamo Special Olympics team. Yeah, I saw played. that. Yeah, they I, played for I the, read that article the West. Already. Yeah. Yep. No, that's awesome. That's, yeah. that's great. I, those are the types of things, you know, that, that the more MLS does, the better it is overall for the league. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you see it a lot with, like, uh, NBA and NFL. NFL's real big on that. Yep. And NBA's pretty big on it. But um, it's just – it's so good to see. It really is. And that is going to take us to this week. Uh, we are taking on RSL. Um, what's the time and date of that one? Oh, my God. Your union are so going to die. Oh, Wow. I'm sorry, man. I know. That's well, going to be Well, they are bad. saying that it, it's going to end up being a game-time decision, but they're saying Andre could play this weekend. Well, that's good. Could. That's good because he needs to what? He's Edson's oh, over oh, here oh. flashing numbers at me like it's <laughs> some sort of gang sign. Nine? Okay. They, oh, we, they play at nine on Saturday. All right. Um, so oh, right me doing my thing. Uh, we've played 25 total matches against RSL. Uh, Do you need me to pull anything up for you? Nope. Oh, he's got it written down. Look yeah, at you. I, I know. He's got to do that so he can write his uh, weekly column. The yeah. The Houston Hoedown. Which is on hiatus right now because there's nothing going on. Well, there is. There's Dynamo and Dash, but that's well, it. Well, yeah. That's what this show is. Well, an RGV. 
Yeah, I still get out of your six teams. Yeah, but I don't put them on the hoedown. Uh, it's the lower division. Well, stuff. you should put them on the hoedown. Eh. Um, wow. Mm. Out of 25 matches, we got 12 wins, 8 losses, 5 draws, and a plus 1 goal difference. On the road, completely different story. Well, yeah. Uh, 12 matches, 2 wins, 6, six losses, 4 draws, and a negative 7 goal difference. Uh, oh, RSL yeah. is sitting currently in 8th place with uh, 23 matches played. Yeah, they are. 7 wins, 12 losses, 4 draws, and a negative 14 goal difference. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Thank you, Houston. Yeah. Um, they do also have the third worst road rec- or home record, excuse me, uh, with four, four, and three. Oh, snap. We have a New York Derby on Sunday. Nice. Wow, I didn't know that. That's good uh, enough. But, wow. like I was telling you all, uh, before we got on, do not think that the Dynamo are going to walk into Rio Tinto and beat them. Uh, oh, their no. last six, they are two, two, and two. Oh, no, not at all. Um, and I got more. Well, well, wait. Before you go any further, or are you doing more stats? Got, got a couple more stats. Oh, okay, more. you can finish, and then we'll, we'll do uh, predictions. Their home form, they are 3-1-2 and two in their last six. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Wasn't that about what Minnesota was in their last six when we faced them this Something past like that. week? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really close to that number. Uh, their last match was a 2-2 draw against Columbus. Uh, last time we played them on the road, it was a one nothing win. Alex scoring with the assist from Rico. That was last year. Oh, yeah, because we played him at home this year. Yep. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that match either. Yep. But our last match, 5-1 trouncing of RSL. How you feeling, Megan? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. That's couch duty right there. Uh, I know. I know. But, you know, no, it's not because I assisted in her getting Kyle's game work kit. So. Oh, okay. All right. He sweats Kyle? a lot. Oh, Beckerman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, so what do you got on this match? Uh, Thoughts? Oh, man. Thoughts. Talking points. Uh, there's so many talking points. Number one, um, we play against RSL actually really well, in my opinion. I think we match up against them pretty well. Plata scares me, um, especially the way we play yes. on the road. Um, we tend to play a little more back. We don't play quite as hard pushing. But I do think the last four or five matches on the road, we've definitely played higher with a higher intensity and that sort of thing. And I think coming off this, this match uh, over the weekend, I think Wilmer's going to ride the guys pretty hard. Um, about how they came out, they came out, they came out flat. They did. They absolutely came out it flat. It looked so, like Portland was definitely going to come out and beat us. Oh yeah, it. it yeah, I was scared to be honest. I really was, and it had nothing to do with Portland and everything to do with how we started that match. Yeah. Um, I. I. Mm, so I'm going to go for my prediction already, uh, just to get it out of the way. I, I think we go in and I think we beat RSL two one. Um, and I think that two happens early, and it's another one of those games where It'll we just put we just nails. yeah it, it's <laughs> going to be up till the very last minute type of thing. Um, and I think RSL will have plenty of chances, but I think the defense and and t- Derek will get it done. Um, the biggest talking point I really do think is um, Plata versus Machado because Machado pretty much ends up marking him for most of the match. Mm. Um, and, you know, Machado actually has incredible closing speed when he needs to recover, and there's not a better 1v1 defender in MLS. There's not. He's just incredible 1v1. Um, but Plata has also beaten him a couple times, and that's not really all that surprising. You know, that's not Machado's game. Um, the good news is Machado doesn't have to really have to worry about Plata going up for headers or anything like that. <laughs> um, you know, we don't have to worry about that, I feel, as what much. What is he, 5'4"? Uh, yeah, he's pretty short. <laughs> uh, he might be 5'5", five, five, but it ain't much. Um, but, you know, it's they can't leave him open. They can't leave anybody on RSL open in the box because they will absolutely destroy you in the box. Um, but I think it, it really is going to come down to us coming out with that intensity that we typically come out with, uh, come out, you know, with a commitment to attack, a commitment to defend, you know, commitment to all that sort of stuff and not, and being willing to put in the effort to push high and push hard. Um, if we do get those two goals, you know, within the first 20 to 20 to 30 minutes, uh, if we can go into halftime at 2-0, I feel pretty confident that we can come out of that with a, with a win. Um, my biggest concern, though, is if we give up that goal, how do we respond? Mm-hmm. Um, and really, you never know until that day. You never know until that moment after that goal is surrendered how the team responds. But I think we have the players to respond properly to that. Um, I do hope that we start Elise in Kyoto this match. Um, and, you know, I don't care if it's Kubo or Morrow. I don't care which I, one starts. I do. I'm sure you I, do. I, I want, you kind of hinted at that to begin with. I want Memo, or, um, Minota to start. So I, mean, I, I think he's played better. 
he's played better the last few matches, whereas Kubo played better the first few matches of the season. I think it's been a, almost a 50-50. Uh, you'd split time between the two, um, and I, I'm okay with that. And I think that's, I think that's the attempt going forward. Uh, yeah. That was really cool to watch that replay. Um, but one, one talking point that we do need to bring up is, is VAR going to yep. have an impact? I'm not a fan. Could be positive or negative. So if we want to just talk strictly VAR, I like the idea. I don't like how it totally ruins the flow of the game. Soccer's not like football or baseball or hockey. It's... Yeah, yeah you but you got to get... That you got to get them right, and that's the biggest no, problem. No, I, is I that totally the officiating is not good enough that they have to do it. Um, I think it would be different if the officiating was good enough, and I don't know how much it's going to interrupt the flow of play. I mean, you're talking oh, maybe like Federation's three. Cup. It was, uh, yeah, but they were also testing it too, and I think they're going to work some of those kinks out before they actually start VAR here in MLS. Um, you know, I think we maybe see three, four scenarios where it does slow the game down a little bit here and there, but. To, you know, to be fair, it's on teams to learn that, and I think we'll see some of this too, I think they're going to start being a whole lot harsher with time-wasting mm. because of VAR. Not yeah. because of VAR calling it out, but because with VAR, the matches are going to be slower to begin with. They're going to have those moments. So if you have a player going down with cramps and at late in a match and you've had two VAR checks, that's two, you know, two probably 30-second to one-minute stoppages in play yeah. that... There's no way they if should they be going down. If they can get down. it down to 30 seconds to a minute, I'd be fine. And I think they but. will. I think, you know, and part of it, too, is they're introducing it, right? It's a start. You have to have the hiccups early on. It's never yeah. going to be perfect out of the gate. It's never going to be perfect out of the box. And I think we see over maybe the first five to six weeks a few moments where people are just like, this is the worst idea ever. But then I think as they start to call out more of the bad calls, start correcting some of those bad calls, and start calling stuff that they've just blatantly missed – I think you're going to find that fans are going to get behind it a lot more over time. So I was listening to Jason Davis on soccer. Uh, Why do you listen to Jason Davis? I'm just kidding. I love you, Jason. On uh, the United States of Soccer today. Yep. And he brings up a really valid point. Why did they not just decide to start this in the beginning of a season? Because now you're going to have an unbalanced... Number uh, of games. Exactly. You know, way. you've got some teams that have, you know two, three games in hand over over other teams. To be honest, I feel like the MLS didn't feel that the technology was ready yet, that they didn't have the technology in place Then why not themselves. start it next year? Because I think they also know that they can't afford to wait much longer on it. Um, there have been some atrociously bad missed calls, and there have been some atrociously yeah. bad calls. Um, and I think they know that officiating is the number one thing right now that is keeping MLS from taking that next step. And that's the truth of the matter, is mm -hmm. that it really is the number one thing. Um, and I think, too, if this works out, then I think we'll see it in NWSL. And to be very fair, they need it worse than MLS yeah. needs it. Um, so what were you saying? You were saying 2-1 for your prediction? I totally forgot this. Oh, that's all good. 2-1 for your prediction? Yeah, 2-1 two one, two one was my prediction. We're going to grab this. Carson here in a minute. Um, don't up, cars? get him on at 7.45. What's up, Cars? Uh, we'll run down through the schedule, and then we'll get him on. I told you, Alex, that we would get to VAR. See, that was just for you, by the <laughs> way. Um, me, I, I'm still in the mindset that we played D.C., and it was D.C. That's why we beat D.C. Um, I don't think that we mm. can't win, but mm. if I had to put money on it. I got to counter your argument because it wasn't like we just went into D.C. and then just won. We went into D.C. and throttled them in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, but I also think most teams can go in there and throttle them. Not too. in 15, 20 no, minutes. No, not in 15, 20 minutes. No, no, that's what I'm saying, though. This team's offense is capable of yeah. doing that. That's all I'm saying. I didn't want to interrupt you, but it was necessary because you were a jerk. Go um, ahead. But I'm going to say 2-2, two, two, but I can definitely see a 2-1 type win out of us. <laughs> what the heck are those kits, man? So Josh, Josh just face messaged us the uh, a screen cap of the way to go FS one MLS All Star. Wow, what is that keeper kit? Looks like Ronald McDonald back there, <laughs> dude. All I right, do, sorry, we're getting off track. Well, real quick, I do like the the shade that uh, Adidas is throwing at Nike over the uh, denim kits. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what? There's something we're gonna talk about with that. We'll do that after. How much they cost on eBay and how much I really want one? Well. Actually, it's going to get worse. 
I guarantee you it's about to get a whole lot more expensive. We'll talk about this off the air. No, we got to talk about uh, it on air because okay. it's actually a big point. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we'll talk about it. It's, it's yeah, coming up. So, uh, yeah, so if Josh messages in. Um... <laughs> it looks like something <laughs> from Attack on Time. You know, that is absolutely fair. It, hey, is, uh, it is fair. Josh, comment on the, the feed and let us know what your prediction is. Yeah, why aren't you tweeting? Uh, why aren't you tweeting? Why aren't you posting on f- YouTube? Yeah, Josh, do your job. Do your job. Even though we don't pay you, do your job. Well, wait, we're supposed to get paid? Hold on, this is not, news. Not yet. <laughs> no, that's not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get paid for this. Are you kidding me? Edson, who is sitting right here, says 1-1. One, one. <laughs> We're, oh, did you say that on the... Oh, huh, hey, look. He's like, you guys aren't listening to me, so I'm going to post it on YouTube so you see it. I feel you. <laughs> Tell you off air. All right, I hear you. So he must not feel too well about this match then. So as we've said all along, he's just a pansy. Dude, just I grow agree. a pair and just post it what you think it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, what I have you, no problem What are you hiding from? Are you hiding from our fans? Like, I have no problem predicting if the Dynamo are going to lose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think they're going to lose, they're going to lose. It's, it's how it goes, bro. Yeah, it's MLS. <laughs> that's, um, that's accurate. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, let, me, let me go ahead and message Are you Carson. Calling, calling Carson? Uh, I'm going to tell him to call me because I keep Oh, okay. Well, while you're number. doing that, we'll go ahead and bring up. I oh. don't want to update now. Okay, no, I don't care about you. Uh, yeah. All right. So, um, so the reason I mentioned when you started talking about Adidas jerseys and how much they cost and all that fun stuff and the shade they threw. So it was, it was leaked today. It was announced today. Uh, that MLS and Adidas have renewed their uh, partnership for another mm, eight years, six years, six years, six years at s- roughly seven hundred million total, which is one hundred and seventeen million per year average. It'll probably start less than that, probably like seventy million the first year, and then slowly go up from there. Uh, but the big reason why this is important is what's being said is that, uh, and now this is what I've actually seen official, and then what I've heard. What is official <laughs> is that the money is going into a a like a, a league pool with uh, some, which is the, the group that does broadcast stuff for and tournament stuff for uh, U.S. soccer. Um, it's going into a pool with for them specifically to use however they see fit. But I think, to be fair, what's going to happen uh, and what I've seen tweeted out as pro- the probable way they're going to use this is roughly $2 million per team is going to be added as TAM um, and incentivized specifically to push teams to sign younger players from interna- internationally. Um, and so how does that work for the Dynamo? I know you're about to ask that question, Justin. I, I just see it in your eyes. So how does, that, how does that work for the Dynamo? We get a lease at the end of the season. That's how it works for the Dynamo. Uh, Josh, just say 2-1 Dynamo. Stop talking. You check your messages. No, I'm actually here, and I showed up to do the podcast. Sorry, I was talking. That was my <laughs> fault. So you're poor, and your computer won't run the stream on YouTube. Well, you have a phone, bro. This is true. You know, all I'm seeing are just more excuses. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a hard time, Josh. I, it's I fun. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and get Carson on. Um, oh, Sweet. He, Carson, can you hear us? By the way, Josh, Car- uh, Carson, nope. Josh says you're cool. <laughs> Apparently we're not, but it, you are. And I'll be frank, that's pretty accurate, actually. Oh, so, somehow, somehow every week Josh is too sick to come into the podcast and never too sick to call in real confusing to me but whatever well you know he's probably laying in bed right now just drowning his misery and sorrow <laughs> uh with like nyquil or something over being walloped by a whopping four points in fantasy by uh, <laughs> justin over here so what's up carson how are you not too bad man it's not nice and hot out here in vegas but uh the toros <laughs> didn't lose today so that, that's ideal that that is good I'll, I'll take what i can get with the toros this season <laughs> So we got a couple points uh, to cover with you. Uh, we got the new signing. We got the Toros, who did play today, uh, and then the the weekend slate. Yeah. So with let's let's go down the order. So with the new signing, um, Justin Billu, he played for um, New York Red Bulls, primarily Red Bulls two. Um, looked good today. Um, pretty creative wing slash um, outside back. Um, should was be a good he, addition. Uh, hey Carson, was he has been Carson? Was he playing on the left or was he playing on the right? He was playing on the left side today. Okay, good. And he's a he's a left back. That's Victor why I'm Garza asking. Victor Garza to the right wing and kept Ty Green at, at the right back. So they actually moved some people around. Excellent. That yeah, so they they looked okay today. Um, they didn't lose. They actually converted two penalties after missing three last week 
So that was great. So who scored those penalties? Um, yeah, Luna scored the game tying penalty towards the end, and then TJ Kastner scored the second goal of the day. Sweet. It's going to be nice to get Luna back for the penalties. He's usually pretty consistent scoring those. And I couldn't even, I, I want to talk to TJ Kastner and got a quote for him for the article today. We were talking about missing three last week, and that to me is unheard of. I don't know, I've been covering soccer my whole life, but I know for <laughs> sure that's not good. Well, to be fair, it's normally not three called in a match for the same team, so, you know. But yeah, I hear you. Very true. I hear you. And then uh, I, I, I got caught up watching the Open Cup match. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you got for us, Carson? This week they got Seattle Sounders too. Um, this weekend, hopefully uh, we can make it back-to-back non-losses. This would be great. I won't get <laughs> ahead of myself and say a win, but oh come on, uh, this is uh, a draw. This is junior. But, this is junior going back home, man. This is a uh, club half full. There or you go. Cup half full. Club half full. Oh, that, <laughs> that's that's fair and accurate as well. Sorry, Carson, not to hijack you. Go ahead, man. Yeah, no. Hopefully, he somehow like musters up this courageous comeback and is actually able to win you know back in seattle but yeah and uh, i'm not really gonna hold my breath on that <laughs> no no i suspect a draw is more likely than a win at this point and justin down boy down uh, uh so what I, else you got for us there, there's got to be something else right sorry we're all trying to watch this match we're <laughs> simultaneously doing the podcast over. yeah yeah carson we were we were talking before we got on that Sean and I are more intrigued over this Open Cup match than we are over this MLS All-Star match. So. Uh-oh. Did we lose Carson? No. Carson's there. Are you sure? Carson? Yep, we lost Carson. Yep, we, he, he's gone. He's uh, gone. And That's okay. we lost the feed. Oh, Son we'll of move, a biscuit. We'll move out of this. We'll, we'll go into the dash. Okay. Um, we yes. Got Gold Cup, too. Okay. So, um, the dash. Uh, three they did a thing. They did a thing. <laughs> they, did a uh, thing. they did have three players named to uh, the NWSL team of the week. Yeah, uh, I, I can't say this chick's name, so. Cupcake. That's her nickname. Cupcake? Okay. Cupcake. Andresina. All right. And then Cupcake. we had uh, Amber Brooks and Jake so, Amber. So just so you know, it's not actually Andresina. It's Andressa. Andressa. But she goes by Andresina when uh-huh. she plays for Brazil. So they've kind of copied it over. But her nickname is Cupcake. And she is by far my favorite player on the team. And, yes, she is more of a favorite on the team than Carly Lloyd. Weird. Anyway, so continuing with NWSL stuff. Yeah, um, uh, so more players named to the players of the week. Go ahead. Yes, or the team uh, of the week. Amber Brooks and Jane Amber Brooks. Campbell. Uh, Jane Campbell, by the way, has been phenomenal since, and I hate to say this, but since Randy Waldron got sacked, Jane Campbell has been one of the best players well, on the team. Well, because she's finally getting minutes. Yeah, and getting Which, a chance, she she got a chance to finally prove that she did belong there. And you know what? Yeah, she's playing good enough that I think she's going to push Naher and she's going to push other players for U.S. Women's National Team time again. And I think she deserves it. She's been a great, great goalkeeper uh, ever since uh, Morales took over for the Dash, and and she's a good person. And you know, she definitely deserves another shot. And I think she'll get it. And it's been good to see her at tournament and uh, tournament of nations um, because she's been, you know, she hasn't played. But she's been there, and she's been able to experience it, and that's what you want for your goalkeeper is mm. to experience that that type of, uh, you know, that type of intensity, that type of competition. Um, and how about Andresinha and uh, Bruna Benitez uh, in Tournament of Nations? Uh, they helped Brazil to a four-three loss, but Brazil was up three-two, three-one. Mm. They were up three-one. Man, we were getting trounced. Uh, that game was miserable. Uh, but I was actually rooting for Brazil that game, so well, it's okay. I know, I know. It's like that's like kick me out of what here. Is this, level of bad. What does this mean for U.S. women's soccer? Are we finally maybe seeing the downfall because they got beat up the last tournament they hosted? They played. They played a lot of their younger players because they're trying to get them minutes before the World Cup hits again, yeah. the Women's World Cup. And I just feel like that's it's a good thing to do, but I think that Jill Ellis needs to be on her way out. I feel like her winning. The, the World Cup was less a result of her as a coach and more a result of the players that were there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, th- I feel like Tournament of Nations is proving the same way. Um, it's less about her decisions and more about the players stepping up and just playing as good as they can. Yeah. It sucks that the Open Cup feed is still down. 
Yeah. We really need Edson to fix that for us. <laughs> but to go back to the dash, they do currently sit in, uh, in sixth. Sixth place. I got it right here. Bro. Uh, sixth a, place. With a record of six, seven, and two. I don't have that over here. Uh, they are three, zero, and two in their last five. So I don't want to be a downer, but they're at a minus seven goal differential. And yes. that that would theoretically put them actually in seventh place or, you know, eighth place, actually, in this case, maybe. Mm. Um, but they've overcome that recently with a lot of good performances. And I think we're you back. Know, really. Oh, we're back. Hey, yeah. welcome back. All right, cool. <laughs> we're back. If you're watching again. Hey, oh, you're not watching because I think the stream has changed, hasn't it? No. The link is the same. Yeah, oh, it, should, it should still be the same. Link. We are back up. Not that any of you care because you're not <laughs> able to see that. But we are back up and live. Um, live. But uh, they do play the third place Portland, uh, Portland Thorns. Oh, hey, there's uh, two of you watching. They played to a 1-1 draw on July 8th. Uh, and they played this who, week at who, one. Who are we playing next? Portland Thorns. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, is that's that funny. still Thorns? Is uh, that still? Oh, it wasn't the intent, <laughs> but that works. <laughs> Pun not intended. Um, no, Portland's just a really good team. But is that uh, Portland without most of their players from Tournament of the Nations? Probably. That's helpful. That's very helpful. Now, I do. They moved kickoff up an hour because they're going to be experiencing heat, which is what, 11 o'clock Pacific time? If it's 1 o'clock our time? No, they moved. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Because yes. they weren't going to move it up to 1 o'clock Pacific time because that no. would be crazy. Well, No, yeah. They moved it up to 11 o'clock Pacific time, 1 o'clock our time. Well, I haven't looked. I don't even know why they didn't play that later in the night, like 8 because o'clock. Because they have a uh, Portland Timbers game. On the road. Yeah, but they don't want to conflict with that. No, uh, I, I, I see. And it's also a, it's a Go90 life. Actually, it's a match on Lifetime. So it's, yeah. a, it's a nationally televised thing. and. And uh, and their Portland Thorn Portland Timbers game is also really nationally televised. Yeah. That's because it's a that match against sense. LA Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On okay, screw you, LA Galaxy. So, uh, in case you were also living under a rock, uh, the U.S. did win. We're gonna move on to the U.S. the Gold Cup final. Okay. Um, right on. They did win. What was that? Their sixth. I uh, don't ask for you Gold for numbers. Cup. I'm lucky if I can know how many um, they have. over over Jamaica. Jamaica? Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> um, it was... Uh, it, it, it looked tough early. Um, it wasn't the way I wanted to win. Uh, Andre Blake went down with an injury. Oh, man. I, um, if Andre Blake didn't go down, that match ends totally different. It really does. I'm, I'm still happy, though, that he got Golden Glove. Because um, he, he, he deserved it. If you're it. not watching the Open Cup match, you need to turn it on. Yes. Turn They're, on the stream. Are they in the 61st or the 81st? <laughs> Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> the, the feed is a little blurry at the moment. Yeah. Uh, It'll refresh. We're on minute. here, but it is a... Uh... Is it very choppy? Is that no, what we're we dealing go. with? No, we're good. Oh, okay. It was um, just you. Yeah, it was just me. Right on. Um, but they did win. Uh, now, what does this say for us going into qualifying? You know, uh, before we... we have our European stars. Before we go any further with that, I felt like the U.S. men's national team, the way they played the first half or so, felt a lot like the way the U.S. women's national team played their first half. <laughs> Sloppy. Sloppy, you know, just not as good as they could have. Jamaica, for, for part of that look, like, they could have definitely beat us. Until, and, until Blake went down. I I'm going like to tell you right now, if Andre Blake would have definitely. played, it wouldn't have went to PKs. I don't think we would have won. I don't know if it would have gone to PKs. I think it would have. I, I don't know. With, with Blake? He saves one of them. I'll, I'll give you that. Would it end 2-1? 2-1, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so it would have ended 1-1, theoretically. Any, any, maybe you've heard why they didn't call up Giles Barnes? Uh, it was the, or was the, he injured? He's not injured. He just wasn't called up. No. Because um, I think he adds a different dynamic to that team as well. He does, but I also think they wanted to play some younger players. Okay. And I say that, and then they played Javon Watson. I don't understand <laughs> that at all. Jermaine Taylor? Uh, no, Jermaine Taylor didn't play that match. No, he did not play that match. No. He, I mean, he was called up, but that's because their defense is they need as many young or as but many old players as they can get. What What do you think this does? Bill DeBrent is my man. He's going amazing. forward. Sorry. For the U.S. Do you think we're we're on the right track now with Bruce Arena? And I'm, no, absolutely not. Bruce Arena? No. Thank you. Sorry, no, not Josh, a chance. Josh, listen to that. No. Not a chance. Uh, I think Bruce he's a Arena's, band-aid to get us in, in and out of this World Cup, and that's it. Bruce Arena, if he sticks around longer than the World Cup, is going to set us back. Eight years, at least in development age. Josh, are you listening? Oh, I'm sure he's listening. He's probably like crying himself. Well, you were there because he was trying to give me garbage over Bruce Arena. Well, I, I'm aware. I'm, I'm and aware. No, he's not the long-term fix of this team. Not at all. Not at all. 
But so. you know what? Part of it, though, I think, too, is that Bruce Arena is allowing the guys to play how they're comfortable playing. Um, Jurgen Klinsmann pushed players into positions and into formations that they're not comfortable with. Bruce Arena is just kind of like, hey, what do you guys want to play? All right, cool. You want to play that? What are you comfortable playing? All right, cool. You're comfortable with that? Let's do that. Yeah. I feel like he's, you know, pretty much pandering to the players. And really, to be honest, a lot of the players are comfortable enough to make those decisions. But at the same time, your coach really should be a leader and not a not a follower. And I feel like Bruce Arena is a follower at this point. Who was your standout U.S. player in this Gold Cup? Clint Dempsey by a long margin. Really? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Who's yours? Minus, I mean, I you could like say Tim way, Howard, I guess. No, no. I kind of like the way Paul Ariola played. I think he adds a good dynamic to the team. No. He's still young. No, Clint Dempsey was by far the standout. In the few minutes that he played, he was the best player Do on the pitch. Do you think he stays as a super sub? Yeah, I don't Go think forward. there's any question. I don't think there's any question. Yeah. You just have too many good players that are, I mean, they're not Clint Dempsey. They're not going to be Clint Dempsey, but they provide an element that... Uh, you know, Clint just doesn't provide in terms yeah. of the pace, in terms of the pushing the defenders and things like that. I think we do, you know, see Clint kind of phase out a little more over time, which is good. That's what we want, and that's what we're seeing happening now. Um, but you know, at the same time, I, I just, I think Clint is super sub level right now, and probably for a while. Yeah, which I'm fine with. Uh, I guess just bring up the schedule of the MLS, and I'll read off the roster for the All Star game, and we will sign it out. Oh. Uh. I don't know if I can because I don't even know. Wait, schedule? Yeah. You want can. this schedule, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, D.C. United taking on Toronto on Saturday. Philly taking on Dallas. Dallas travels up there. I don't even want to talk about that. Oh, that's that. an away match? For Dallas, I mean? Yes. Oh, God. Port- Portland. Philly's going to get their ass kicked. Shut up. They're so bad at home. <laughs> um, oh. We have Montreal taking on Orlando City. I think Orlando wins that. Uh, Minnesota taking on Seattle. Uh, Chicago Fire and New England. That's in Seattle, isn't it? No. It's That's in Minnesota. in Minnesota? Yeah. Mm, all right. Yep. Mm, all right. Sorry. Uh, Colorado and Vancouver. Uh, you got our match, RSL and Dynamo. San Jose mm-hmm. taking on uh, Columbus. Mm. And then the Sunday's ma- or Sunday match is Portland taking on LA Galaxy in Portland. And then a... Uh, uh, what do they call this now? The New York Derby. The New York Derby. NYCFC taking on the Red Bulls. The New York Is there Derby. one other match or is that it? No, there is. Sporting KC in Atlanta, which I actually think... You knew there had to be one. Uh, I'm hoping and praying Atlanta wallop them. Me too, but I actually think that's going to be a really uh-oh, good match. Uh-oh. Oh, that was so close to a goal. Oh, my goodness. As of right now, they are in the 66th Six, minute, 67th, 67th minute. minute yeah. uh, nothing, nothing still in the Open Cup match. Uh... MLS All-Star um, lineup? Um, you're missing the replay. Watch the shot. Oh. That's not far off, man. All right, you wanted what now? MLS All-Star matchup. We do have one Dynamo player, that's and that's it. Uh, Beasley. Yay. Hold on. Is this even going to play? Details. Details. Hey, there we go. Oh, that's right there. Oh. Really itty-bitty, teeny type. Um, if not, go to box score. Yeah, we're going to go back, and I'm going to just... I'm just going to expand the size of that because that is ridiculously small. <laughs> I can read it. Hold on. I got to find it. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I was doing right. I was doing good. There it, there it is. Right there. All right. So we've got uh, Timmy Howard, Garza, Van Dam. Uh, Van Dam. Who's the other guy? Van Koppelhoff. Uh, Zussi, Schweinsteiger, Bradley, Dos Santos. You pronounce Koppelhoff? It's a pretty uh, easy word to pronounce there. Uh, Dos Santos Lete. I don't know where the Leite comes in, yeah. but... Outdoor, Giadico, and uh, Via. Right. And that's it? Yep. That's the 4 3 3 that they're playing with. Nice. Is it wrong if I kind of hope Madrid wins? If you're hoping what? Goal Madrid wins. <laughs> Goal, Goal Cincy? Cincinnati. All right, Cincy. Just in case you don't know, uh, whoever wins this will host an MLS team in the next round. In the semi, in the conference final. Yes. Not the conference final, in the no. division, whatever they call it, the division final or, so, or semi-final. Yes. The cup semi-final. Yes. That's what it is. Uh, and that, I think, will be next week. Yeah. No, yeah. it's a quick turnaround because yep. of, they had to postpone this match because of weather issues in yeah. Miami and what have you. Oh, watch the, watch the replay. <gasps> oh, that was smooth. Oh, that was a great goal. If you're not watching this, why are you not watching this? It's it beautiful. is on USsoccer.com. But please don't, please don't close us to watch it. Yes. <laughs> well, 
They may not be watching us anywhere right now. Uh, well, they are if they're listening. Well, that, okay, <laughs> if you're not watching live, go watch it. If you are yes. watching live, then don't close us to watch it. Well, uh, I think that is going to do it for us. Uh, be sure yeah, to join us else. next week. Uh, we will be back here, 7 o'clock, 8th Wonder Brewery, uh, next Wednesday. Come out, get a beer. Uh, if you're are nice, you maybe we'll buy you a beer. Eighth Wonder? Are you sure of that? Maybe. That's a very large maybe right now. <laughs> it's pending. It's pe- patent pending. <laughs> but uh, that's going to do it for me. Uh, I'm and Justin. <laughs> I'm Sean. And that's Sean. Uh, and that's Edson. <laughs> Uh, the guy who you can't see who's behind the camera. Yeah, maybe we should have brought him on. Maybe he should be the guy replacing Josh. Damn, dude. Damn. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> don't listen to that. That's wrong. I'm that's joking. Harsh. Get better soon, Josh. That's uh, harsh. But that's going to do it for the peel. Yeah, it is. Uh, Forever Orange. This has been the most chaotic, crazy show you've had. we've had yet. Yeah, but at least we had somebody else on. We- like somebody... Who's actually part of the peel? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? To, uh, okay, I want to say this real quick before you go close it out. Edson did a very good job last he did. week. And Edson, thank you for filling in. I'm sorry I was sick, but I appreciate <laughs> you, brother. Yes, it was much appreciated. Well, we're going to go ahead and go. <laughs> we're going to watch the rest of this Open Cup match, and then I'm going home. Damn straight. Yes. Uh, this is the peel signing out. Forever Orange. Later, guys. <laughs>